In this module, we're going to look at um, 2D phasor fields and, and see how we can use those to understand Fourier transforms in a little more depth. So just as a review, uh, these are the definitions of the forward and inverse Fourier transforms. And in this module, we'll really be focusing on this term here, this e to the minus j, 2 pi, kxx, kxx plus kyy. So we'll start off by really looking at things in 1D. So here we have e to the minus j, 2 pi, kxx. And here, um, this has the form e to the j theta, where theta equals minus 2 pi, kxx. Uh, therefore, we have this phase. In, if we want to draw this in the real imaginary plane, we ha simply have a phasor. It has length of 1, and the theta is given by minus 2 pi, kxx. So let's do look. So the theta depends on both the spatial frequency and also the location x. So let's look at a specific case where the spatial frequency kx is equal to one, and we start off at some location x equals zero. So in this case, two pi kx x equals zero. So theta equals zero, and therefore I just have my um, phasor pointing along the real axis. Now let's say I move to a different location x equals 1 fourth. So now I have 2 pi kxx equals pi over 2. The theta is minus pi over 2 because of the definition we have theta equals minus 2 pi kxx and therefore the angle is simply we've gone uh, clockwise by pi over 2 uh, since that's uh, equal to theta equals minus pi over 2. Now we have x equals 1 half and therefore we have 2 pi kxx equals pi and uh, in this case we've gone this way, so that's actually pi or minus pi is the same, so in this case it doesn't really matter. Um, and finally at x equals 3 quarters we have 2 pi kxx equals 3 pi over 2, and so this would mean going this way by 3 pi over 2, so that corresponds to theta equals minus 3 pi over 2, which is the same as going this way pi over 2, which would be theta equals pi over 2. So we can see that basically um, what we have is e to the minus j 2 pi kxx is a spatially varying phasor where the phasor angle varies uh, with space. And um, for example, if we'd gone one last location x equals 1, then we find the phasor returns back to its origin. And that makes sense. With kx equals 1, the period is just 1 over kx equals 1. So we expect the phasor to return back to its original location after we've gone um, x equals 1. Uh, here we take another look at this. Um, now we're sort of using more um, abstract coordinates of delta x, 2 delta x, minus delta x, and minus 2 delta x. And we're looking at three different spatial frequencies. kx equals 0, kx equals 1 over 8 delta x, and kx equals 2 over 8 delta x, or 1 over 4 delta x. Okay, So let's look at this case. With kx equals 0, now what we find is that since this term is 0, then the angle is always 0. And so we find that the phasors for this spatial frequency um, do not vary. And so this is a characteristic of, of kx equals 0 or being at what's called the center of k space, which is the phasor orientations do not vary at all. Okay. Now let's take this case where kx equals 1 over 8 delta kx, which means the period would be 1 over kx, which equals 8 delta kx, 8 delta x, sorry. And so here, one thing to notice is that the origin, x equals 0, we still have the phasor pointing along the, um, along the real axis. As we go in this direction, we notice that the angle increases clockwise. As we go in the minus x direction, the angle is increasing counterclockwise. And we'll notice here that um, this, this is sort of a half period. We've gone from pointing up to pointing down. And therefore, the half period, the distance from here to here, is 4 delta x. And that makes sense because the full period is 8 delta x. And so we see is we've basically done a 180 degree rotation from here to here, and that's half a period. All right, so the phasor with this higher spatial frequency, now we're seeing this spatial variation with this period. Now let's go to a higher frequency. So this is double 
the frequency we look, just looked at. And so the period in this case would be 1 over kx equals 4 delta x. Okay. So now the period we would expect um, one period is this from here to here. And, and indeed, we find that the phasor orientation has returned um, to the same orientation within that one period of 4 delta x. So this is equal to one period. In contrast to this, this was equal to half a period. All right. And so once again, we see here that essentially what's happening is the phasors is increasing much more. So in this, when we've gone from 0 to delta x, here we went um, 45 degrees, here we went 90 degrees. Okay, So we're increasing that phasor rotation much faster at a higher spatial frequency such that the spatial period is, is higher, is, is smaller, and so that corresponds to a higher spatial frequency. Let's take a look at some specific examples of this. So here we're actually in a 2D space, so this is x and y. And now we want to look at what the phasor representation looks like when we have kx equals 0, ky equals 0. And because this is zero spatial frequency, we don't expect any um, variation in either the x direction or the y direction. And that's exactly what we see here. There is basically no variation of the phasor orientations in any direction as a function of space. Now let's look at a case where we make kx equals 0 0.25 and ky equals 0 0.5. Okay, So this would correspond to a period of 4, and this would correspond to a period of 2, because that's what you get if you invert those two. So let's see if that's the case. If I, a period of 4 along the x-axis would be here, so that's 4 long. And indeed, we look at that's one period of the phasors to return back to uh, their original location. So from here you see it's rotating and then it returns at this point. Now we said the period in the y direction is 2 and so let's see this. So 2 is here and in fact if we look in the y direction the variation repeats itself every 2. Okay, So every 2 we see that the phasers return back to the same orientation. Now let's look at a um, Another case, where actually a simpler case, where kx equals 0 0.25 and ky equals 0. So once again, the period in this direction is 4, and so that makes sense because that's returned. And here we see no variation of the orientations along any column. You notice that the orientation stays the same, and so therefore ky must be equal to 0. Uh, here's a slightly different case, where kx equals minus 0 0.25 and ky equals 0 0.5. So this has a period of 2, and this has a period of 4. But notice that this minus ha this has a minus sign here. So let's see what's going on here. Well, in this direction, it's still a period of 4. And that makes sense, because these return to the same orientation. And this, we said, has a period of 2. And that um, makes sense, because that takes two uh, units to repeat. But what's the difference between this one and this one? It's really only in this minus sign. And so let's see if we can see what's going on. So let's pick any row, let's say the middle row. So I start off with, at the origin, I have this phaser. And now you notice as I move in the x direction, the phaser is going counterclockwise. Whereas up here, in the upper, over here, it's going clockwise. Okay? And so that's the difference here. So a positive spatial frequency means we go clockwise as we move in the positive x direction. Whereas a negative spatial frequency means we move counterclockwise as we advance in the x direction. All right? So basically here you notice that going from this point to this point to this point, we're going counterclockwise. Whereas here, going from this point to this point to this point, we're going clockwise. All right? So the sign of the spatial frequency tells you the orientation. And that's really because that all comes down to this definition of theta equals minus j 2 pi kx x plus ky y. So whenever this argument is positive, then there's going to be a clockwise rotation because of the minus sign. Whenever this argument is negative, the whole thing is positive, And so there's going to be a, a, a positive uh, a counterclockwise rotation. Okay. This is the last example we'll talk about, and so this is now showing sort of a much more 
uh, for more detail where we're seeing a phasor field here in the x and y direction. And you can sort of notice the pattern. You, you notice things are repeating sort of along lines like this. Okay. And so this is more complex because we have both kx and ky and it's much finer resolution. And as we talked before in some previous modules, we know that this must represent some place in k space uh, oriented like this um, because of basically the um, we, we said before that the patterns would be orthogonal to this. Now there is some ambiguity about whether or not it's here or potentially it's here, okay? Because both of these would give the same orientation. So we could, in this case, we may not be able to tell, but we can sort of look at this orientation here. And we notice that things are going, um, as we move along in the x direction for any given row, the vectors are going in this uh, counterclockwise rotation. And as we go along here in the uh, y direction, uh, in a positive direction, they're also going counterclockwise. So in fact, because of that, we would, we would uh, guess that it's probably down here because we have a minus kx and a minus ky component. And from our previous slides, we said that that would give rise to this sort of counterclockwise rotation because essentially theta as a function of x and y is going to be going this way. Okay, so I think that's good for this module.